Hey guys, look at this gadget. It's a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus computer. I've turned this into a fantastic privacy tool which you can use in your house. Coming up. So this, folks, is a tiny little computer. And you can buy this at Amazon for around $55 without an SD card. Now, what's so fun about this little project is that it can protect you on the internet in various ways, including as a VPN and as a Tor router. Now, if you don't know what Tor router is and how it protects your privacy, watch my videos on Tor routing so you understand how important it is. Now here is the power supply. Now let me just open this up for you. So you can see that's uh, that's what it looks like. Just a micro USB connector over there. And it comes with a power switch. So you can kind of extend the power supply with this power switch. Now, if you want to see what's actually happening on the computer itself, you need to plug in an HDMI monitor, and there's the uh, connector there for HDMI, and plug in a USB keyboard in one of those USB slots, and then you can actually see what's going on. I'll show you a demonstration to show you exactly what the interface is when you run this. Now you can run this device without either a keyboard or a HDMI monitor. You can run it in what is called headless mode since it's the way I set it up. It's pretty much self-contained and self-running. So you don't have to worry about doing anything to it other than plug it in. So all you'd have to do is plug in your power into the power thing there. Oops. And then plug in your network cable. You need an Ethernet cable for that port right there. And then you can plug it into your existing Wi-Fi or to your modem supplied by your DSL carrier. Now what can we use this device for? Well, do you use Internet of Things devices? Some of the products I don't recommend, but you probably have it. Like Alexa Echo, Google Nest, Ring, Internet Connected Security Cameras, and so on. Most of you probably do have some gadgets like that. The problem is that they're connected directly to the Internet and exposes your IP address, which some of those devices are now then exposed to hacking. How about passing those devices through a VPN or Tor to protect yourself? That's what I made here. I wrote a little software on this device so you can configure it to work as a VPN router or as a Tor router or even as a regular router. If you have guests in your house, they will often ask you to give them your Wi-Fi password. If you're intent on protecting your privacy as I am, it really bugs me when they use my Wi-Fi and they're not on a VPN. So they're basically associating their activities to my IP address. This is my defense for that. Everyone goes on a VPN, even guests or internet devices. When they're uploading photos to Facebook from your house, they're not going to be identifying your IP address if you have a VPN router. This is also for your own use. If you don't want to bother with installing VPN software on your devices, then let the router connect to the VPN for you. Everything is completely menu driven, so you don't have to be a programmer or a Linux expert to figure this out. It's pretty self-contained. Just reboot and it starts. This model has a 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi and a gigabit Ethernet adapter. It doesn't have a big antenna, so the range is less than your big high-speed Wi-Fi router, but it does the job. 
Now here's a demonstration of what happens if you connect to the Pi using an HDMI monitor and a keyboard using the software that I wrote for this. You can also, if you're a Linux expert, connect to this using SSH. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in buying the Raspberry Pi from Amazon. Now this is the interface if you're trying to connect to it using SSH. So here I'm typing in the command to log into SSH, which you can do from a Mac or Windows or Linux or even an iPhone. Putting in the password in here. And then that brings me to this screen, which shows me the current profile and it shows the current SSID, the home Wi-Fi. It also shows you the channel and that it's five gigahertz, the current profile for the VPN and the IP address. I'm going to go in to the menu and the menu shows me the menu shows me the uh, options for different modes. I'm going to pick open router mode which will allow me then to use it as a standard router like with no restriction just like a normal router you have at home and you can see there it says route mode router mode open routing and then press any key now we're going to select Tor routing mode and if you can click on that then it will allow you to be on a Tor router mode and it says on the bottom standard Tor routing as your router mode and then press any key to go back to the menu. Then here we have the option for the VPN router mode. I'm going to click on that and I go into VPN router mode and you can see that at the bottom it says router mode VPN routing. Again this is the automatic setup here. It goes to VPN routing by default. You don't have to touch this if that's what you're doing. Now let me go to Wi-Fi settings and this is where you set up the Wi-Fi if you don't want to use the defaults. So I'm going to click on set Wi-Fi settings right there. Now this is where you can change the name of the Wi-Fi from the default home Wi-Fi to whatever you want. I'm just typing in the defaults here including the default password. And then here I specify if it's a 2.4 or 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi I'm going to select 5 for 5 gigahertz and then the channel which I will select to be 48. And that's it. And then it's all set up for Wi-Fi. You need to do you do need to reboot this for this to take effect when it comes to Wi-Fi. And there it is. It's set up for those settings. Now I'm going to go to the VPN settings and this is where you put in your VPN username and password. And you can also put in the private key phrase if that's needed in your case. And that's it. That sets up the VPN. Now this is where you select a VPN profile. If you click on VPN profile, it will load up and auto download the different profiles available to you and all you have to do is pick the one you want so we're going to select East click on OK or hit enter and then that's going to be selected and then it shows that we are now in VPN routing mode again and those are the Wi-Fi settings and we're using East now going back to the menu, there's some other options here like network status. This is mostly for tech support. We already know what the IP address is. It's shown on the status page in the front. And you can also configure the Raspberry Pi. Now normally you're not going to touch this except maybe to update to the latest version. And you have some other options here like updating the OS version, the re rebooting the router, and using the about Brax Wi-Fi which shows you the current version so you can talk with tech support and identify your device. So this is the standard configuration if you want to use the menu. Again, you can do this directly from the device 
by attaching an HDMI monitor and keyboard or you can do it from remotely using SSH. Now I want to show you something else here. Another option for the hardware. This is a Raspberry Pi with a monitor. So it's the same thing except here we put in the monitor right on the case. This is a bit more expensive but uh, it's just convenient because you can see all the settings right there at a glance without having to plug it in. So you just plug in the device and you can see the status and you can log into it without having to remember what the prior settings are. I have the software available at my store at rob.brax.me for $90. I'll send you a micro SD card that you can insert into the Pi and you do need a Bytes VPN subscription to use the VPN but it will work on Tor routing mode without a subscription. If you're not in the US, I can send you the software as an image download and you can burn your own micro SD card. It just has to be at least 16 gigabytes in size. Now you don't need to buy my software if you're a techie and if you have a lot of patience. You can make your own version of this if you want since it uses open source software as its base. But configuring and installing can take many, many, many hours and you have to know what you're doing. It's a fun project. A lot simpler though to just insert the micro SD card and put it to use. But if you're a programmer, you may find better uses of your time than mucking around with this. Also, this software is made to be plug and play with Bytes VPN. If you want to use some other VPN provider, you can do that as well. I will have the instructions for that in the manual. You just have to follow some command line steps and know where to download the VPN profiles for that particular VPN. By the way, there's a company that sells pre-configured Wi-Fi VPN routers called FlashRouters.com. Just for comparison, a typical Wi-Fi VPN router sells for, for around $250 to $500. I'm going to put the link to that website in the description. At the moment, WPA3 is not available for any router or software. When the software for WPA3 encryption becomes available for Wi-Fi, I will be able to update the software as well. It shouldn't require a different device. If you like my content, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell.